Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Um, this short, short story is called Conversion. Uh, it's about uh, the tension among fundamentalism, sexuality, and family. Priscilla and her husband, Zachary, an anesthesiologist, were members of Phyllis Schlafly's Eagle Forum, which describes itself as, quote, leading the pro-family movement, end quote. They were so happy when, after much praying, Priscilla finally got pregnant and had her first child. John was the perfect child. Not only did he sleep through the night early and get toilet trained just a few days after Priscilla started the process, he was sweet. He loved getting and giving affection. He was patient, sharing crayons with the other kids in the church's preschool. Then one day, when Priscilla was picking John up from kindergarten, one of the other parents said with just a hint of derision, you know, John is exceptionally sweet. Priscilla's heart leaped. She thought, could he turn out gay? I didn't do anything to make him gay. Right away, Priscilla took John to the toy store. Would you like a G.I. Joe? He shook his head. How about a truck? No. Here is a great super soaker water gun. He turned away, looked around, and picked up a stuffed dog. Mommy, can I have him? Priscilla said, not today, John. And she teared up. Throughout John's childhood, Priscilla and Zachary avoided the issue. Yes, they tried to get John into sports to no avail, but mainly they just quietly hoped he'd grow out of it. But in high school, they pried open John's locked diary and read that he fantasized about having a boyfriend. So they scuttled him to a, quote, conversion therapist to try to, quote, make him a functioning heterosexual. John said, Mommy, Daddy, I'll try. And John attended four sessions of visualizations, counseling, quote, social skills training, and even a week-long camp of, quote, prayer and group support. But before the week was over, John was crying, inconsolable, begged to go home, and his parents reluctantly picked him up. When it was time for college, not surprisingly, Priscilla and Zachary wanted John to go to a Christian college, but John refused to apply. He insisted on going to a state university. His parents relented only if he promised to not only join, but be active in InterVarsity, which is the Evangelical Christian Student Organization. John attended the InterVarsity meeting, or at least one, but felt, as he did at the heterosexual conversion camp, that he had to escape. So he did, and instead joined the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Alliance, and finally he felt at home. And like many students who vigorously flapped their wings of freedom upon leaving parents' nest, John had an exciting sex life, and he became HIV positive. He did not tell his parents. Surprising even to him, his response was to begin treatments for sex change. He took the hormone replacement therapy and then had the sex reassignment surgery. Alas, in the recovery room, John had a severe stroke. The only movements he would ever make would be with his mouth and he would be in significant pain for the rest of his life. Upon seeing John in the hospital room, Priscilla thought but did not say, God punished him. Instead, she took Zachary's hand and with the other hand, held John's hand and said, let us pray. John stared at her hand and then, struggling for breath, spat on it. Then John's chin seemed to stiffen and he said, I wish I lived in California the Die with Dignity Act, and I want to die as a woman. Zachary reached into his pocket and retrieved a vial and a syringe. Thanks for watching. I'm Marty Nemco.